I feel like there's been this narrative that Drew Brees doesn't have it anymore or he's on a steep decline. And quite frankly, I think it's just an extreme overreaction after one bad performance. He didn't play well in the game against Minnesota. I think there were several reasons for that. And I will get into it at the end of this video or towards the end of this video. But I do think that Drew Brees is getting slept on a little bit. I still think Drew Brees can play. I mean, for one thing, this guy did throw 27 touchdowns to just four interceptions in the, when he was healthy last year. So that's pretty impressive in its own right. But I just want to talk about some plays. We'll start things off with this one where it's going to be a cover three zone. And what's going to happen is that Michael Thomas is running that route right there. And it's going to be play action. So this is actually a pretty good route against this type of coverage. You know, the linebackers move in. Breeze can throw it over the top. Makes a ton of sense and it can absolutely work out. And so after the ball is snapped, Drew Brees is going to step back. And you look at Michael Thomas, he is kind of open right here. You know, you see plenty of quarterbacks try to fit it through this window, kind of in between two linebackers in the middle of the field. And plus it is in a gap in coverage. It's There's a small window, but it's something you can do. However, Brees is not throwing the ball right now. Yes, he has a quick release, but that's not the reason he's not yet throwing the ball. The reason for it is because you look at the offensive line, there is just no pressure right now whatsoever. Drew Brees has all day to make a throw if he wants to. And so, you know what? He's going to say, I do want to. I do want to take some time to make this throw. He instead is going to wait and allow Thomas to get closer to the sideline. Then he makes a throw where the window was bigger and it was an easier throw to make. And Thomas was further downfield so they could pick up more yards. I mean, I don't know how many other quarterbacks are doing that kind of thing. Yes, the offensive line did a great job of blocking for him. The line was great all year. But I think what was more impressive to me on that play was the fact that Breeze noticed that his line had given him plenty of protection. He realized the situation and was able to make that type of throw. Not a lot of guys would do that. A lot of guys would make a throw earlier and make a throw through the smaller window just because that's what you naturally do. When you see a window, usually you try to just throw the ball right then. But Breeze understood the situation, knew he had time to wait. Just a really good play by him. I also think there's this narrative that Drew Brees can't throw the ball deep, which personally I think that's just something that people say to older quarterbacks now. They just say, oh, this guy can't throw the ball deep. I think it's just something that we just assume is going to happen, but that's not the case whatsoever. I mean, don't get me wrong. Brees has never been like the big arm quarterback like a Brett Favre, but at the same time, he can definitely throw the ball downfield. Like, take a look at this play. It's going to be a cover two zone, and what's going to happen is that for the Saints, First things first, they're going to have their receiver who is in the slot right now, closest to the tackle. He's going to simply just run a quick curl route. It'll get into the zone of the Colts player who's covering the middle of the field. And then what they're going to do is send another receiver like that. He's going to get past him, and this can help widen up that gap in coverage that will already be there. And potentially there could be a window where Breeze could make this throw. And so once the ball is snapped, you are going to notice that a New Orleans Saint player is going to get into the gap in coverage, but keep in mind, this gap is not as big as it might look on paper. Yes, there is a window where Breeze can make this throw, but it's not quite as big as it looks because there is a linebacker who's going to be in the way, so you have to throw it over the linebacker, but you can't throw it too high because there are safeties in the area. Not to mention, both safeties are going to see this play and try to run over and deliver a hit to the receiver. But Breeze is going to make this throw absolutely perfectly. He gets it there in a hurry too. And they're able to not just get this completion, but get it, get it to be a touchdown, which is definitely a very good play from Breeze's perspective. And so that's just kind of what I mean. This guy can still throw it deep and he's still a very smart player, which as we all know in the quarterback position, that just means so much. I mean, this plays another example where what's going to happen is that there's actually a mix up on this play right when it's starting. You see those two 49ers players and right now there's two guys who are covering that New Orleans Saints player. That's why they're talking to each other because they both realize, hey, wait, we're both covering the same guy. That's a problem. And because of this, it's now meaning that, OK, they're thinking one of us has to run over and cover that guy, which is true, but the problem is that there's a 49er covering him as well, meaning the Saints receiver who is all the way on the bottom half of the screen is actually completely uncovered right here. This is just a total blunder by San Francisco. But what's interesting about this play is that there's a reason why such a small amount of it was played before I got into the graphics you see on the screen. And the reason for that is because the All-22 footage started almost instantly right before the ball was snapped. Usually it's like five to six seconds. This wasn't even a full second. 
And the reason for that was because Brees hurried up to the line and tried to get this ball snapped as quick as possible because he saw this. By the time San Francisco was just figuring out that something is off, Brees not only realizes something is off, he knows exactly what it is. He's able to throw the ball over to his receiver that was completely wide open, Ted Ginn Jr., and they're able to pick up a first down just like that just because he saw your mistake. And now, granted, leaving a guy completely uncovered at the line is a pretty massive mistake, it still just goes to show that Breeze is the kind of guy you can't make a mistake like that against, and his intelligence is a huge reason that he is so good, but it's not the only reason. His arm talent is definitely still there. It's a combination, which, you know, I mean, I think it's crazy that if Tom Brady retired at like 38, people would be in such awe of what Breeze is doing, but it just so happens that they're both playing well into their 40s, which is wild, but I mean... Breeze is still playing at a high level, no doubt about it. There was also this play where it's going to be a cover two zone, and what the Saints are going to do is they're going to have those two players run those two routes, so it's going to be first Kamara, who's going to run just a quick route that'll get into a zone and coverage, but then also what they're going to do is have Michael Thomas run just past that route, and so basically the idea is that the Panther who's in charge of covering the zone, who is in the middle of the field, will have to choose one of them to cover, the other one could get open. Now, there is a way this could not work, and that would be if the Panther makes sure that he covers up Kamara, who is in the middle of the field, and then a safety runs down and makes sure that he covers up Thomas. That's the way it could get counteracted, and after the ball is snapped, the first part of that works out flawlessly, you know, Kamara's getting taken up, and now over here, a safety is doing a pretty good job of trying to cover up Michael Thomas right here. There's not a huge window, there definitely isn't. Again, Looks kind of like a big window, but keep in mind, Breeze can't fire it right this second. You know, he can get in the throwing motion, but if he was throwing the ball right now, it would not be a good move because there's a Panther in the area. So he's going to have to time this one very well, and he's going to have to get it to Thomas in a hurry. But he does both of those things. Thomas makes the catch and hangs on to the football. Just a good play, again, by A, by Thomas, and honestly, by the entire Saints players on that play. But also, Breeze made a very good throw. His arm talent is still there, and his his football IQ is just as high as it ever was. So that's why I am still very high on Drew Breeze. I think people are sleeping on him. You know, he's not just one of the best of all time, but he's also still performing at a high level. I do have to say, however, there definitely is one small uh, thing that has to be brought up, and it's the fact that he didn't play well in the playoff game. I mean... Really, the entire Saints offense didn't, but he was part of that team. He had a crucial fumble late in that game. You know, if he plays better, they probably win that game and at least move on to play Green Bay. And who knows if they can win that game? Maybe they could have. However, honestly, I think a huge reason why they did get down by so much early on, or not by so much, but why they did get down early on, was actually the offensive line. The offensive line played great all season long, and then all of a sudden, it did not play very well in the wild card game, and I think Breeze was a little bit rattled by that. And, like, this play was a great example. It's a red zone situation inside the five, actually. And you have Ted Ginn Jr., who's going to get double teamed right here, but he's running around over the middle, and what I really want you to take a look at is how good of a first step he's going to take here. Eric Kendricks, who is supposed to be covering him right away, goes down sort of towards the bottom half of the screen, and as you see, since Ginn is running so far up, that at this point, I mean, he's taken himself out of the play, Ginn did a great job on that first step, so now he's basically just in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but also keep in mind, the Vikings player who's supposed to be covering him is pretty much, at this point, parallel with him, and Ginn is already having a running start to the top half of the screen, so he's in good shape. So when Ginn continues to run up to the top half of the screen, he is going to get open, and Drew Brees notices it, but he doesn't have time to make that throw because he gets sacked so quickly. Again, that's not to make excuses. He definitely had his own bad plays as well. He threw an interception that was just not a great decision by him, so he definitely didn't play well, but it also was a group effort in a negative sense. So yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on Drew Brees. Is I think Drew Brees, I think people are sleeping on him. I think the Saints could be, once again, very good next year. Absolutely. I don't know how many years he has left in him. It is possible he'll fall off a cliff. But I think for people saying that he didn't look good last year, I just don't know what games they watched. Because if you watch the tape, he played very well last year. He did not really go down at all. I think you could even make the argument that he played better in 2019 than in 2018, even though he was an MVP candidate in 2018. He was great after coming back from the injury in 2019, no doubt about it. So yeah, 
Uh, I definitely think that Drew Brees will be a force to be reckoned with next year. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.